What do you make so far of his takeover? Well, it's uh, it's kind of a fascinating story. Um, you know, you have one of the most prominent communication platforms in the world being taken over by the world's richest man, uh, who also uses the platform and is doing all sorts of attention grabbing and somewhat controversial things uh, with his, uh, you know, with his platform. Um, and I think time will tell in terms of the changes he makes to the platform, um, the improvements he makes to the product, and how he's able to turn around the performance of the company and, you know, service the huge amount of debt that he's taken on, et cetera. And, It'll be a great story to watch over the next few years. I think the question we're wondering about, and it's a private company now, but obviously still a huge business that we follow, is, is whether, whether he can make it into a better business, right? 90% of Twitter ads, I don't have to tell you, of Twitter revenues are from advertising. What's going to happen to that if there are changes to content moderation, as he has implied he wants to do by making it the free speech town hall for, for the world? Well, I think that whatever changes Elon may have in store uh, for Twitter and other additional monetization streams, whether it's subscription or people paying for verifications or whatever, and there are probably endless number of ways to make money uh, using the Twitter platform. I think advertising is going to be a significant uh, revenue driver uh, forever. Um, and, you know, whether it's 90 percent or one day 70 percent, we'll see. But I think it's going to be a big deal. And for advertisers to want to be active on the platform, it has to kind of be a, you know, a clean, well-lit space, you know, uh, and with clear rules about what's allowed and what's not allowed um, and what kind of speech is tolerated versus not. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you know, it didn't surprise me, despite all of the claims that he had made uh, beforehand, uh, that he's now set up a content moderation board. Uh, I think he would be smart not to be the, you know, the face of content moderation globally himself. Uh, I think uh, diffusing that responsibility and getting good advice as far as what to do is a, is a smart move. Um, and hopefully it's heading in that direction. But, you know, I think advertising is going to remain critical. Uh, Twitter has to be a safe place with rules about what, what kind of speech is tolerated and not tolerated. And, you know, I'm sure they can amend the rules somewhat from what they are today. But actually, my prediction is it doesn't change a ton. We'll see. You, you think that what the company has been doing has been satisfactory on that front? I'm not going to say it's been satisfactory, but I think that the rules that they've set up are largely reasonable. Um, and I think my prediction is that the rules that are ultimately set up won't, won't um, differ markedly from the rules that are set up today. I mean, let's not forget, you know, 10, 12 years ago, Twitter was, uh, didn't have rules. You know, you could say really anything, mm -hmm. you know, and then over time, we started to see the problems with that, you know, when, you know, people like ISIS were sharing photographs of beheadings on Twitter. You know, and is that free speech? Is that something that we want on the platform? You know, it's not illegal to share a picture of a beheading, but is that something that you want on the platform? And so there are really some extreme cases that led us to, uh, you know, create certain rules for what was tolerated or not. And then well after I left, that's really when, you know, the, you know, the political side of things got much yeah. more heated. Uh, but I think there will be rules and there should be rules. Uh, advertisers and users will both demand them. Um, and, you know, they may be a little bit different than they are today, but my prediction is I don't think the rules per se are going to differ uh, markedly from what's in place today. It's really interesting. So the beheading, obviously, that's the hellscape. And Musk has said he doesn't want it, want it to be a hellscape, but, it, but some gray areas, which really shouldn't be around anti-Semitism now, which is yeah. really heated up ar around... You know, use of the N-word, which LeBron James was tweeting about this weekend, uh, uh, hate speech and how you define that. How, like, what, It's hard to, it's such a gray area. Uh, do you think it can be determined by a content moderation panel? Uh, I think that's a, it's a great question. There are tons of gray areas when it comes to speech and tons of hard decisions to make. It's a hard issue. And the thing that I'm somewhat heartened by is, you know, some of the contexts sorry, some of the comments that Elon had made prior to closing the acquisition sort of were sweeping generalizations about speech and about what he stood for and didn't stand for. And so far in what the comments he'd been, he's made to advertisers, setting up a content moderation board, et cetera, there's some indications that it's he sees it as being a more complicated problem than maybe he was implying previously, which I think is, is, a, is a real positive. I also say one other thing. The tone 
um, that he brings to the platform himself as a user of the platform uh, is very important. Um, and I think he, that's one area where, you know, I hope it's a bit better. Uh, I think he's reacted to certain things. I mean, he's trolled people all the time on Twitter. Um, you know, I think he thinks it's funny or maybe it is. Uh, but like the tone he brings and the tone he sets is important um, in terms of the kind of uh, norms that the platform has. There are rules and there are norms. And I think that both of them hopefully can be improved over time. Uh, and, and, you know, I think he's an example for how the platform should be used and shouldn't be used. And, you know, again, we'll see how that all evolves. Uh, but I do well, have right. personally some concerns in that area.